Have you ever wondered what kind of performance boost was better from one generation to the next for GPUs? Has the boost in performance for each generation been decreasing, increasing, or staying the same? Recently, the GTX 1080 Ti was released and placed as the new king of GPUs for gaming, claiming to be a larger boost in performance than the GTX 980 to 980 Ti. Whether that's 100% true or not brings up a similar question. What about the performance boost from a 7 series to a 9 series GPU and a 9 series to the 10 series GPU from Nvidia? Well today we are going to compare three same tier cards across three generations. The GTX 770, 970, and 1070. This can answer many questions. How far have we come from two generations ago? What is the margin of performance boost? Has the cost per frame gone down or up? By how much of a margin have these cards become more efficient? So many questions, but the answers lie ahead in what took me five days to benchmark and run a deep analysis on. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, but not really. Hey guys, what's up? My name is JD from JD Tech Gear and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion, tech reviews, unboxings, and setup design. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider checking out the rest of the channel and subscribing if you want to become part of the Tech Junkie family. So before I get into the video, I want to explain my testing methodology. The exact cards being tested are the ASUS GTX 770, MSI GTX 970 Gaming 4G, and the MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X. Comparatively speaking, yes, these are all non-reference cards, meaning they are not like the Founders Edition of each of these cards. But with that being said, the performance among non-reference cards are still very similar in performance for each tier, which still validates this comparison. For running benchmarks, I selected five games and four separate benchmarking programs. The games being used for benchmarking are GTA 5, Forza Horizon 3, Battlefield 1, Doom, and Shadow of Mordor, all at 1080p at ultra settings. I chose 1080p since it is still widely used and also the fact that the 770 would struggle with 1440p and even the 970. So 1080p is the most level platform of testing. Moreover, these games provide a well-rounded performance evaluation. The 770 was released in 2013 and should be expected to keep up with 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016 game titles. Forza Horizon 3, Battlefield 1, and Doom were released in 2016, yes, but Doom is a well-optimized game that can be ran very easily with older cards such as the 770. Battlefield 1 is a well-optimized game, but more graphically demanding than Doom is. And Forza Horizon 3 is one of the most demanding AAA titles I have seen aside from Crisis in a while, due to its lack of optimization to PC since it was originally an Xbox One exclusive. These games provide a good balance of testing the GPUs, except when it comes to Forza and the 770, but more on that later. If you think it's unfair to pit the 770 against these titles, except for Forza, keep in mind Crisis 3, Metro Last Flight, and Tomb Raider were all released at the same year as the 770, which were graphically demanding games even for today's cards. So for the benchmarks, we'll be running Heaven, Firestrike, Time Spy, and Furmark. Heaven is a standard benchmark that will be ran at 1080p and 1440p. I chose to do one benchmark of 1440p to put that resolution into perspective across the cards, but it will not be used into the final evaluation due to my previous reasoning of why I chose 1080p. For a mark, is a benchmark to burn in your GPU and really test the thermal and power efficiency of your GPU. So finally, let's get into the benchmarks.
Mark is the last benchmark, but one of the more interesting ones to me. I let each of the GPUs run the stress test for a while with their fans all at 96%. Once I saw steady thermals and power draws after a while, I recorded their respective values. So the GTX 1070 maintained to remain at 65 degrees Celsius at a core speed of 1800 MHz. The 970 remained at 65 degrees Celsius as well, but at 1300 MHz. And lastly, the 770 became pretty toasty with temps at 82 degrees Celsius and a core speed of 1058 megahertz. So this tells us what type of thermal efficiency each card has with this burn-in stress test. The 1070 had a thermal efficiency of 20 megahertz per degree Celsius. The 970 came in at 20 megahertz per degree Celsius and the 770 with 13 megahertz per degree Celsius. This measures the thermal efficiency due to the fact that the higher core speeds and the respective higher power draw, the GPU gets hotter and puts into perspective what kind of core speed we're looking at for each degree Celsius. Granted, the heat sink is different for each card, but regardless, each architecture has its own thermal efficiency. To measure the power efficiency, I used statistics provided from the Fermark benchmark. The GTX 1070 was running at 1.083 volts at a core speed of 1800 MHz. The 970 ran at 1.2 volts at 1300 MHz and the 770 at 1.183 volts at 1058 MHz. So the 1070 ran at 0 0.006 volts per MHz, the 970 at 0 0.009 volts per MHz and the 770 at 0 0.0011 volts per MHz. So the 1070 came out on top with the best power efficiency in terms of volts per megahertz. So how the heck do we even sum all this up? Well, let's take it piece by piece. First, let's look at how much each frame costs for the GPU. For this, we will be using the original MSRPs of each card, as in the actual MSRP that they were retailed at, not the MSRP they claimed and then charged 70 to $100 more for. That'll be for rants for a different video, but anyways, here are the original prices for each card. Now before you say it's unfair to use the original price of the 770 since it came out 4 years ago, remember, I excluded the performance of Forza Horizon 3 so all in all the average frame rate is fair. I averaged the average FPS at base clock and the slight overclock speeds to account for each card's overclocking abilities. <laughs> Now finally, let's look at the overall efficiency gain from going from one generation to the next. So first we have the 970 to the 1070 and the 770 to the 970. So here are the three categories we'll be determining the efficiency gain for each card. The thermal efficiency gain, the power efficiency gain, and the performance in terms of FPS efficiency gain. Now we can finally average out the overall performance efficiency gain between the two generation transitions. So going from the 970 to the 1070 had an overall performance efficiency gain of 47%. And the 770 to the 970 had an efficiency gain of 43%. Finally, those are the numbers we are looking for. So in conclusion, we can see the transition of the 970 to the 1070 had a better overall performance increase and also at a better value. And it seems like Nvidia is trying to keep up this efficiency gain from one generation to the next at around 45%. So in fact, we have seen improvements on the value 
for dollar and also the performance gain being slightly better. We can securely say that we've had a very good amount of improvements in each generation of GPUs for NVIDIA, which is comforting that they're not directly ripping us off, charging ridiculous prices for slight improvements. Now, NVIDIA does not have direct competition with AMD as of now, since they own two separate parts of the GPU market. But AMD still shows in fast improvements in thermal power efficiency from the R9 to the RX series, and not to mention at very reasonable prices. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it intriguing. Also, please leave a like on the video if you liked it because the video took forever for me to make and conducting the research and benchmarks over and over again was very time consuming. So I hope you guys enjoy that because a lot of time went into this and yeah, it was pretty tedious. So are you guys surprised by what these numbers are? Are you expecting something else or what were you thinking about that? Um, yeah. This is a lot to read. This is like 12 pages of a script and my mouth is getting dry. So before I start stumbling over my words, I wanted to thank you guys for watching the video. And remember, if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.